Have you ever needed to render a bunch of elements on screen but couldn't do it without taking a hit to performance? For example, trying to render a bunch of individual tufts of grass in a landscape. Well, Unity has a few ways to optimize for this right out of the box. You can statically batch meshes together by flagging game objects as batching static, or you can use a technique called instance rendering by enabling a flag directly on your materials. But what if you need more control over the process and need to optimize rendering in a way that's more specific to your game? That's where Unity C Sharp Job System comes in. In this video, we'll be taking a look at a technique called indirect rendering and how we can use the C Sharp Job System to make it even faster in Unity. This video was created in collaboration with a friend of the channel, Porth Song, who wrote the script and will be narrating the rest of this video. Take it away, Porth. What is indirect rendering? Indirect rendering is a way to repeatedly draw the same mesh with minimal draw calls. In Unity, this is done by using the draw mesh instance indirect method, which is similar to the draw mesh instance call. The primary difference between the two is that the draw mesh instance call has a maximum capacity of 1023 elements. With draw mesh instance indirect, we can define an upper limit of elements that we can render through indirect arguments using a compute buffer. This lets us bypass the limit of rendering 1023 elements. Setting up the indirect renderer. Indirect rendering requires us to set up a custom shader that contains a structured buffer and to set up the compute buffers which contain our arguments through the C Sharp layer. Setting up our C Sharp layer. To help us have a better understanding of the process, we created a class called the Indirect Renderer. This class is an abstraction whose sole responsibility is to set up our compute buffers and draw the content. The first compute buffer we set up is our Indirect Arguments buffer. This is typically set up with an array of unsigned integers and describes the structure of the content that we are drawing. The first element in the array describes the total number of indices we need to process, and the second element describes the total number of instances we need to draw. The third and fourth elements represent the location of the starting index and vertex for the submesh we intend to draw. The positional data we need for rendering is set up using our transform buffer. We want to try and take advantage of writing directly to native GPU memory. So we must construct our transform buffer as a structured compute buffer type that allows sub-updates. We then set our materials buffer to be our transform buffer. Since we will be utilizing the C-sharp job system to populate our data, we will also be using the compute buffers begin write and end write methods instead of the set data method. The begin write returns a native array which can point to our GPU's memory directly instead while the setData method copies the contents from our system's memory to our GPU's memory. We split our drawing into two phases, begin draw and end draw. Begin draw simply starts the write operation and returns the native array which we will write to, and end draw ends the write operation and will actually issue the draw call. Setting up the shader. Since we are using compute buffers, out-of-the-box shaders provided by Unity will not work. We are bypassing the typical mesh renderer workflow, which means that Unity does not have the local-to-world matrices it needs to render the mesh in the correct position. To start, we define a structured buffer of type float 4x4 called matrices. This will be the buffer we will write the positions to. We import the indirect input.hlsl file into our simple indirect lit forward pass.hlsl file, so we can introduce our matrices variable for our forward pass. When we view our vertex pass, instead of receiving the mesh data only as the input data, we must also receive the instance ID. The instance ID will allow us to access the correct matrix in our structured buffer. We wrote modified versions of the get vertex position inputs and get vertex normal input functions because originally these functions use the unity matrix M variable, which is not correctly set. This is due to us bypassing the typical render pipeline using compute buffers. 
setting the position for our shaders. In our demo scene, we have many copies of the same type of vegetation placed around. To grab these positions, we bake the position and rotation into a scriptable object called render batch. The transform data is then read by a model behavior called render proxy, which constructs a native array of float 4x4s. This native array contains all possible positions that our mesh can be on. We also construct a new instance of an indirect renderer so we can actually issue these draw calls. To see how indirect rendering works, we can feed our native array directly to our indirect renderer. Our update loop follows the general principle of scheduling our jobs early and completing them late. So similar to our video on flocking, we complete any previous job we schedule, we then draw the content, and we finally schedule the next jobs to compute. In our example, we call nDrawFirst as this completes any previously scheduled write operation we had done on the previous frame. This also schedules the draw call to be executed on the render thread. Afterwards, we begin processing for our current frame by calling our beginDraw function and processing the data on it. For now, we are just doing a copy from our matrices source array to the native array we received from our beginDraw function. Back in the Unity editor, if we head into play mode, we can see that all the grass that we had in the scene is now rendered. If we look at the frame debugger, we can see that we only need one draw call to draw thousands of elements altogether. If you're interested in this type of content, then I'd like to invite you to sign up for the Level 2 Game Dev Newsletter. Once a month, we'll send you an email with curated content that's designed to help you take your game dev career or hobby to the next level and help you keep your finger on the pulse of what's going on in the industry. We'll share content from Infallible Code, Thousand Ant, and some of our friends in the space. If that sounds good to you, then sign up now using the link in the description. Frost thumb calling. Although we are able to reduce the number of draw calls needed to draw thousands of grass objects, we can introduce something called frost thumb calling. Frost thumb calling is the process of determining which elements are in view of the camera. If an object is in view, then it will be rendered. Otherwise, it's ignored. Unity natively supports frustum calling with mesh renderers, which is why you see the number of draw calls change as you move your camera around. Unity, by default, does not support frustum calling with the draw mesh instance and draw mesh instance indirect APIs. Although there are newer APIs such as the batch renderer group, which can support frustum calling, we will be writing our own using the C -sharp job system. Frustum calling works by checking if any points of the bounds of the mesh are within the camera's view frustum. We can determine whether or not the element needs to be rendered by calculating the dot product of the mesh's position with all six planes of the view frustum. If our dot product is negative, then we know that the mesh is behind the plane. If any of the planes return a positive value, then we know that we are in front of the plane. If all our dot products are positive, then we know we must render the element because it is within our camera's view frustum. To do this, we've created a few jobs and utilities. We first calculate the frustum planes in our frustum utility class by calling geometryUtility.calculateFrustumPlanes method. We store the result into our static array of planes. We can treat this array like a pointer by pinning the array and getting the address of the pinned array. This lets us construct an unsafe array which we can pass into our embed extents job which performs the dot product of the planes in each mesh's extents. The primary job which handles the frustum culling is the view frustum culling filter job. For this job, we use an iJob parallel for filter interface. This job is similar to the iJob parallel for interface, except that it can return a true or false value depending on whether or not the dot product test of the mesh and its position returns a positive value. If the condition is true, we store the index we are processing to a native list. When this job is finished, we can use the results of the native list to pick out which instance is within the view frustum. 
This is done by our write to GPU buffer job. We iterate through each element in the native list, remap the index to the matrix from our source array, and store it into our destination array. The destination array is the same array that we opened via our begin draw function. When we enter play mode, we can see that not all of the grass is rendered like last time. Only whatever is within view of the camera is rendered. By utilizing the C-sharp job system and compute buffers, we were able to introduce multi-threaded frustum culling to help reduce our render times. This has the benefit of only passing the minimum amount of data required to the render pipeline and reducing the amount of memory required compared to a technique such as static batching. For links to our demo project and documentation, please refer to the description box below. Thanks, Porath. If you enjoyed this video and found it useful, you'll definitely want to sign up for the Level 2 Game Dev Newsletter using the link in the description. Also, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and as always, I'll catch you in the next video. Thank you to all of my supporters, and a special shout out to Alwyn Caravilla, Do2, Dustin, Jennifer Irwin, Nicholas Monter, Pichag Bungo, Saraf Chatterjee, Umet Sarin, Usaf Ali Kassel, and Uriser. Thank you guys.